this beautiful aircraft behind me is a Boeing 707 that the United States Air Force purchased and the Air Force gave it the designation the VC-137C. This particular aircraft is the first presidential jet aircraft designed and built for the President of the United States. It is a quite unique and beautiful aircraft. This aircraft started its Air Force career as the Air Force One for President John Kennedy. And it's had a 36 year long career as a presidential and then as a VIP aircraft. And now it continues its ever expanding career as a museum artifact, which it not only tells the story of President John Kennedy and our presidents, but it's also a wonderful Cold War artifact. Special Airlift Mission, or SAM, is the call sign they used for the aircraft. 1962 was the year it was produced, so it uses 62 at the beginning of the serial number. But rather than say the entire serial number, the air crew referred to it as SAM-26000. We can refer to this aircraft as SAM-26000 or as President Kennedy's Air Force One. Yes, other presidents flew it, but most people identify with this aircraft carrying the President of the United States and the events associated with President John Kennedy. SAM-26000 carries a very special paint scheme. The President of the United States had been flown in jet aircraft before, but these aircraft had A-glow orange panels on them, and they really weren't presidential aircraft. Rather, they were just one of several VIP aircraft. When the Air Force decided to purchase this aircraft for the President, the President realized he was speaking for the American people, and he wanted something special, so he tasked his wife Jackie and a man named Raymond Lowy who was a famous railroad designer and a really wonderful designer and architect to come up with a special paint scheme for this aircraft. What makes this aircraft special is not only the bright colors it shows that stands out in the whites and blues, it's just marvelous. But you'll also notice painted down the side of the entire fuselage in big, bold letters, United States of America. This is a symbol that the president is representing the Republic and the people of the United States. And they came up with this really beautiful paint scheme. And the basic paint scheme is still used by the presidential aircraft even today. The rest became a keenly etched memory for all America and the world. Earlier, and even the freeway was jam packed with spectators waiting their chance to see the president as he made his way towards the trade mart. It, it, it appears as though something has happened in the motorcade route. Something, I repeat, has happened in the motorcade route. When the air crew learned that the president had been assassinated and that the body was going to be flown back to the D.C. area on SAM-26000, they simply refused to put the casket in the cargo hold, which is directly below the aft entrance. So what they did was take a hacksaw and cut away the bulkhead and pull that bulkhead out and pull out the first four seats in the rear. And when the casket was delivered at Love Field to carry the president's body back to D.C., they carefully put the casket inside the aircraft. It was an extremely emotional moment. Not only were the members of the new Johnson administration present, but also the former Kennedy administration. And they were carefully bringing the president back to D.C. Once the president's body, rather the former president's body, was delivered and brought on the aircraft, President Johnson knew that the country was disarray. People knew that the president had been murdered and they knew he was dead. Is the government going to stand? Is there something worse happening? So President Johnson, understanding the importance of this moment, made sure a photographer was available to take those classic photographs, the ones we've all seen, for the president taking the oath of office with his wife and Mrs. Kennedy beside him and showing the continuance of the American government and that the Constitution is still standing. President Johnson completely understood the importance of the psyche of the American people and to make certain that they understood that things were safe and the government was in safe hands. He made sure those photographs were released as quickly as possible. And so, on that day, it helped calm everyone just to see that things were continuing. Things would never be the same again, but we would reach a new way of approaching America's destiny. SAM-26000 has carried every president of the United States from President Kennedy through President Clinton at one time or another, some to a lesser or greater extent. This aircraft had 36 years of experience and service to the Republic. It's done a wonderful job of carrying our presidents.
Some people might say the SAM-26000 is just another airplane. Yes, that's probably true. However, I must disagree. I think this is one of the most important aircraft in the history of aviation. This aircraft has been everywhere. It's done everything. It was a symbol of the Cold War for the United States. It carried the presidents of the United States. Major decisions about U.S. foreign and domestic policy were made on this aircraft. SAM-26 Salvin represented the United States around the world. It carried the president of the United States to Southeast Asia. It carried the president to break down the decades-long threat of war with the Soviet Union and the People's Republic of China by carrying our president and breaking all tradition by going to visit both of those countries. It's hard for us, with the Cold War receding so far behind, to understand how dangerous the world it truly was. This aircraft carried the people and the visitor when they go aboard this aircraft can actually be in one of the most historic places on Earth that moves. Yes, it's an aircraft. We at the National Museum of the United States Air Force, however, see it as much more than just an aircraft. It's an artifact. It's a pretty big one, and it's one of our biggest artifacts. But it's extremely important that we do our best to maintain it so it will be available to the American public to visit for centuries in the future. And they will be able to stand at a place that shaped American history on that fateful day in November. They can stand where a president first looked out on China, on Moscow, and they too, perhaps, for a moment, get the educational value of what a museum can give by allowing a person to say to themselves, I see what it was like. I understand what the president was seeing. I understand what his staff members were thinking. I have a better understanding. And that, after all, is our primary goal, to prepare the American people to understand what's going on, and in particular, our youth. We're reaching out. And so, as children go through this aircraft, they may not remember President Kennedy's assassination, but they'll know when they see it. They can say to themselves, I've been there. I understand and I have a personal relationship with this artifact. So this aircraft, yes, it flew for 36 years, but it's going to continue. It's just going into its next career. This aircraft has an entirely new career of educating and informing the public, the American public, and the world.